Recently, I was checking my email and I had an email from a gentleman named Ken Richard. And here's what Ken had to say. He said, hey, Jacques, not sure if you will get this, but my piano journey started with you about two years ago. Never knew what a middle C was prior to that. No other training ever. I'm about to release my first album of my compositions next month. I am up to 28 compositions. Here is my first album. Enjoy, Ken. I was blown away and I wanted to get more to this story. He was basically saying, hey Jacques, you know, not sure if you remember me or know who I am, but a couple years ago, I didn't know anything about playing piano and now I'm releasing my first album. I had to get the story. So I reached out to Ken to see if I could kind of interview him and find out what this story was and it did not disappoint. So in this video, I'm going to play for you that full conversation between myself and Ken and find out how he went from not even knowing middle C, not knowing anything about piano, to releasing actual piano albums. And I invite you to check out his music because it is amazing. You can search for Ken Richard on Spotify or you can go to kenrichardpiano.com. So without further ado, here is that conversation between myself and Ken. What's up, Ken oh, nice Richard? To, nice to meet you. You too. Well, uh, I, if, if it's okay with you, I just, I'm very curious about what you've been up to as far as music goes the past couple of years. So I just want to kind of dive into that story a little bit, if that's okay. Absolutely. So it kind of started uh, three summers ago when I went to Dodger Stadium and I watched the uh, Eagles, Doobie Brothers, and Steely Dan. And I grew up listening to them in the 70s. I graduated from college in 1980. Uh, never thought about playing the piano, never had any formal training, didn't do a thing with it. The only thing I ever did is when I was a kid, my, my aunt had a uh, piano and I would go and, you know, peck with one finger and just kind of bang out a melody. And, you know, I was always attracted to that. But like most kids, you know, we love music. I, 70s, in my opinion, is the greatest decade for music ever, without question. But, of course, I'm a little biased. But yeah. when you think about the Eagles, Elton John, Steve Miller, Jackson Brown, you know, it goes, the list goes on and on. So to have the opportunity to go see the Eagles, Steely Dan, and Doobie Brothers at Dodger Stadium, first concert, the first, it was the first concert since Glenn Fry died. Uh, it was the Friday before I told my wife, I said, I'm, I'm going. And I went on StubHub, spent 900 bucks for a ticket and was 18 rows off the stage, went by myself and couldn't wait. It was a hot summer day. And uh, I had b actually bounced for the Doobie Brothers in 1975 at, at Cape Cod. No way. Mine, yeah, a friend of mine, I was a skinny 17 year old kid. A friend of mine said, hey, we need someone. He was doing it, he's a big weightlifter. He said, we can only pay you 12 bucks. And I'm thinking 12 bucks, I'll pay you to go. And uh, went and did that, and and I'm going off a tangent, but I just it's just a, such a wonderful story. Um, and uh, I got there, and they said, "Well, you're the new kid. You got to go out in the parking lot and work work the uh, parking lot before the show." But the good news is, after the show starts, you can go anywhere you want. So I did. Me and another new guy, we went out there, and everyone who came into the to the to the show had to come through us. And I'm thinking to myself, why is this such a bad thing? You're seeing everyone coming through, all the girls coming through. And I was like, are you kidding me? So the show started. I don't even remember who warmed them, who, who opened up for them. But I sat there and the Doobie Brothers came out. And they, this is before Michael McDonald. And they started with, do, 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 Jesus is just all right by me. It's the only song I remember. Fast forward 42 years. I'm walking down to my seat. The, the Doobie Brothers come out. And all of a sudden, I start hearing, do, 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 do. And they start every concert with Jesus is just all right by me. So it was, it was really one of the most surreal moments of my life, that 42 years and what had happened then, where I am. And you don't know anything about me, but I went to college. I'm a hockey player. I played college hockey at UMass. Uh, I've become a lawyer. I, I had my own business for 25 years. I got married, had kids. Uh, raised three kids. They're all adults and out of college now. And, and suddenly that whole bookend of time just, it just impacted me like I'm the luckiest guy in the world. So that's how the night started. So I went down, watched the Doobie Brothers, Steely Dan and, and Eagles in that order and came out of there. And this is kind of the point of the whole thing. It was, you know, I have to try this. I was just so taken by that experience of, um, uh, 
of watching them and you know what music does to you it just brings you back to times and it triggers all kinds of great things and and uh it was just an amazing night and i was just sitting in the parking lot of dodger stadium thinking i gotta try so i went home and i told my wife and she says oh let's have nancy you know go see nancy nancy taught my kids piano again i have zero training zero 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 so i went to her and she she says what are you doing here i said well i want to start she said great i don't usually teach adults but let's see what you know so she said, uh, what do you know? I said, I don't know. I said, say, a, name a song. So she'd start naming name, name, basic songs and I'd start banging them out with one finger on the piano. I didn't know what a middle C was. I knew nothing about piano. And so she said, okay, well, that's easy. You know, start with Mary had a little lamb. And then you, she starts throwing stuff out and I was kind of finding it. And she, and she says, you know, most people can't do that. <laughs> and in my head, I'm thinking, what do you mean most people can't do that? It's higher pitches on the right side, it's lower pitches, and you just, and I didn't, it wasn't perfect, but you could certainly identify the stuff, song. So that was kind of the start of the journey, and got excited about it, and then I started going online looking for help, and I stumbled across your site. Your site caught my eye, Piano in 21 Days. I thought, oh, I can, I can handle 21 Days, and, and I signed up for it, and I paid for it. And uh, over real the- quick, Ken, do you mind if I stop you right there? I want to ask a couple of uh, questions about what you've said so far before we jump into piano in 21 days. So it's, it's very clear you had no piano experience except Zero. for those very brief, you know, when you were, when you were a kid and then no other instruments either, right? None. Zero. I was a hockey player. D- I mean, singing anything? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. I was a choir boy as a kid, but so was everyone, you know? And then, and you started going to Nancy and, and then you started looking online. Did she decide to not teach you or why did you, why no, did you pursue no, I her, her lessons? I to go to her a little. I love Nancy and I kept going to her, but she started teaching me. And I, I think what it was, I understood as a traditional way to teach piano. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, uh, I said, Nancy, I don't want to learn how to read music. I have no interest in learning how to read music. She says, I totally get it because she's my age. I'll, I'll be 62. She said, I started playing when I was four. I didn't read music for years. So she got me where most, I think she said, most piano teachers wouldn't even talk to you. They won't even bother with you. So she got it right away. So I kept going to her, I think once a week for a while. And she started, I can't remember what we talked about. Um, And so I started looking online also and I came across... But why? But no, I'm just. It fascinates me uh, what you're saying about Nancy. Like, she, it sounded like she got it. She understood that you didn't want to learn through sheet music, but it also sounds like that's how she teaches kids to learn. Why is that? I think she comes from a traditional piano background, and and uh, she was taught, you know, this is the way you do it, and let's do scales and 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 all that type of thing. And and my my I. To look at a piece of sheet music, and we've all seen sheet music over the years, it's like looking at Chinese to me. I have no interest in it. Honestly, I I don't understand it. I don't understand how people have to look at sheet music and it will tell you which note to play. That makes no sense to me at all, zero. And the more people I talk as I get along with this, they say, you're doing it the right way. You you know, the sheet music is kind of, you know, it is what it is, but you'll move much quicker doing it your way. But the thing I found, Jock, earlier is that I, I hear music. I can hear it. I've always been able to hear it. So that's a big thing. The, the sheet music's in my head, in the sound that I hear. And uh, so we've concluded I have relative pitch. Uh, she has perfect pitch. We often debate which is better to have. She'll walk into a restaurant and hear some band and she, she, her head wants to explode because she hears every wrong note that the band is playing. And I don't necessarily hear that, but it was interesting. Elton John was on doing a benefit not too long ago. And uh, he was playing, I think, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. And I could hear his mistakes. I could never hear his mistakes. He was making mistakes after playing it thousands of times, right? And you know, and I know, the more you play something, you become subconscious and you don't even think about it anymore. And that's how I am with my compositions. I I can have a full on conversation and get through it, which is wonderful. Uh, but even Elton John was making mistakes and most people don't hear them, but the more you're into it, the more you hear it, you start hearing little tiny mistakes. Like, ooh, that, ooh, he just met, yep. you know, he hit the sus too. He didn't mean to do that. He meant to do the root, you know, whatever, whatever it might be. 
So um, went on, looked at, found your, your course. I was interested in your tagline was 21 days, learn how to play the piano. Tutorial. Well, who doesn't want to do that? Right. So that was a good, that's a good marketing pitch. So I, I looked at it and I signed up for it and I can't remember how much I paid for it, but I paid for it, as you know, and I just started your process, which was excellent to, to give me a reference point of how to approach piano. So I did. I, in fact, you said, you know, do, what is it, 20 minutes every day? I can't remember how long it was, but I do four lessons at a sitting. I, I couldn't wait 21 days. I was going at it, right? So I got through the program pretty quickly. And, uh, and that was really the, the basis. And I can remember sitting up in my room, I had bought a, no, I had an old Yamaha. I've since have four pianos, including a 1904 Steinway O, uh, which I bought, which is phenomenal. But at the time I was using this old junky old Yamaha keyboard and hitting, hitting the, the basic uh, uh, one, five, six, four progression and making it sound pianistic was like, wow, this is kind of cool. And I think I was just kind of improvising and throwing notes down a little bit. So that was kind of the, the start. You know, like any learning process, you know, it's a curve, right? It's flat, 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 flat. And then you start kind of going up and then it accelerates. And I certainly had, it's like anything. It might be golf. It might be any skill that you have. But I look at piano like any other skill. It's just something you got to kind of learn and understand. And it builds on itself. And, um, and there's nothing like being able to produce a piece of music. And there's nothing which I experienced today when I'm playing at my golf club on a Yamaha C5, I'll sit there and play my stuff. People come around the corner and they'll say, you know, I don't know what that is, but that is beautiful. And as a musician, you know what that feels like. Sure. Right? And that's your own music that you're playing. My own music. That's why they I'm don't know what it is. Covers. No, I'm not. I can play probably 20 covers now. But I really focus on my own music. I've composed 28 different pieces. I think you mentioned you went and listened to a few of them. Mm -hmm. And um, I would call them contemporary classical is probably what they are. That's where my musical heart is. Ludovico Inaudi. I heard him and I thought, that's me. That's what I, I mean, I really identified with that. Now, will I go out to a rock, you know, See, uh, see Steve Miller or something like that. Absolutely. I love pop rock music, but to play, I can't see myself composing pop music. It's kind of boring actually, and kind of silly, but when you get into the classical, you you can really expand and, and go in a lot of different places. So it's, it's been really, really fun. So uh, to, to keep going, um, I, I took your course. It was excellent. I would recommend it to anybody and you have that recorded now. <laughs> so if you're going to see, watch this video, you got to sign up for Jacques course. If you don't believe me, go to my website and this is where I, you'll end, you could end up. And it started with Jacques. So there's your little, your snippet for your, for your pitch. And I mean that totally seriously. Well, thanks so much. And look, drop, drop uh, pl plug your website there so people can go check it out. What, what's the web address? Web address is very simple. It's uh, www excuse me, www.kenrichardpiano.com. Excellent. So I would encourage anyone who's listening to this, go to my website, Ken Richard, no S, kenrichardpiano.com. You'll see the website. I just launched it last week. There are links to all my pieces on SoundCloud. There are also links to, uh, you can buy my new released album called Over the Bridge. It's on iTunes, Amazon Music, uh, Google Play, all the all the basic sites. And yeah, I, you I, you sent it to me before it was released. I've listened to the whole thing. It's I mean I, I'm a little biased now too, but I think it, I think it's amazing. And um and so I'm that's great that it's actually released now. So yeah, I hope people will go go find it and buy it. It's 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 the real deal. I mean it's it's awesome. Well, thank you. It's uh, it's funny too going through this process, and I'm still very much learning. People who, you know, everyone has critics, right? So mus musicians have critics. The people who are critical are not 98% of the people who look, listen to it. It's all the frustrated musicians out there who never made it is what I'm finding. It's like, because they might do it a different way. Well, music's not like that. Music is an expressive art. And this is where it should have gone. And maybe I got to, you know, transpose the key there and go to the seventh instead or whatever, but that's what I hear and that's what I do. And if you don't like it, don't listen to it. 
Now, does that mean I'm not open? Of course, of course, of course it doesn't mean, mean that. Nancy continues to be so, so um, helpful with giving me little riffs and little tricks and little uh, things to try instead of, uh, you know, doing it. And like she'll say, my hands are little, you know, to try to spread out your hands, do more open chords, those types of things. You know, so she's very helpful, but you know, I'm relying on 58 years of worth of experience there and all the things that she's done and she writes music. So music is infinite and I'm not suggesting not to learn or grow or listen to people, but you know, at the end of it, as Billy Joel once said, I don't write for anybody else. I write for myself. And as Paul Simon once said, the most important thing is how it sounds. <laughs> how does it sound? And you know, the, the Simon and Garfunkel have always been masters at making it sound good and as simple as some of that music is. And as you know, Jacques, some of the most beautiful music is so ridiculously easy and simple. It just, and we don't know why it impacts us, but it does. It doesn't have to be complicated. So, um, so yeah, I released the album and uh, I, I've, I, you know, I built up the website and I'm getting analytics and I'm just, you know, this is all new. So what's my end game? My end game is I'm just going to keep writing and I love writing. I feel like I got a hundred more songs in, inside of me and I want to really go off into the, uh, the modes a little bit. I don't quite understand them yet, but I will. Uh, and I think a lot of my music incorporates modes and I don't even realize it. Um, but uh, Hans Zimmer always said, if, if there's ever any rule in music, it's, it's this one, break the rules. And uh, I think that's a very, very good uh, admonition for people who are aspiring to be music people. Uh, I have one of the highlights of this whole thing, one of my songs, it's called Christini. It's on SoundCloud. It's, on, it's not on the first album. It's my daughter. She got married last summer. And I wrote a song for her. And I take her through her life. And I had it orchestrated by a very, very wonderful producer. His name is Patrick Woodland. I would look him up. His website is Cool Tone Records. And he's done music for Letterman. He's done, uh, uh, yeah, for Letterman, the outro for Letterman. He, many, many Disney uh, pieces. He is just unbelievable. And we've become great friends. But he orchestrated uh, Christini for me. And uh, I got to dance to it with her at her wedding as the father-daughter dance. I wrote the song that I did, which she had, no one had heard it, fully orchestrated. You can hear it on SoundCloud. And uh, there wasn't a dry eye in the place, including myself. And uh, it, was, it was incredible. I take her right through her life. I start up high. And at the time, I didn't know what, really understand what time signature was. And as it turns out, it's in three, four. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't intend that. The waltz. The waltz. So it's per. It was perfect. It was the perfect time signature for the message and the, and the thing that I tried to convey. It's a it's a waltzy kind of time signature, uh, taking her through her life. And on on SoundCloud, there's my piano version of it, which I play. And then he didn't really touch it. He uh, he orchestrated it. So he added. Uh, strings and trumpet uh, and trombones and oh it's just it's majestic and I take her right through her life who gets to do that I mean it's just it's just an incredible experience that this is and I feel like Jacques that I'm just starting now I, I don't feel like I've started yet so and I have you to thank for a big part of that because your course uh, kept me interested and it was very methodical and it was very easy to follow. And, you know, you, a couple of times you were throwing, you know, I was a new guy. I didn't know what you're talking about, but I just rewind it and kind of listen to it again. Okay. Okay. I got it now like that. And I'm not criticizing it at all, but that's part of the learning process. But I would highly recommend anyone who wants to start to play the piano to uh, sign up for piano in 21 days. I, there's, there's, it's just great. And by the way, everyone, he didn't ask me to do that. I'm doing that because I'm, I'm, I'm very sincere about that. And that's, that's very true. And thank you so much, Ken, man, going back to the, the, the story of, of the wedding, man. I mean, I was, I was getting teary eyed just hearing the story. That's just unbelievable. I've got two young daughters myself. Um, and that just really resonated with me. And, and, you know, I got married nine years ago and my wife and I's first dance was a waltz and we oh. learned to dance a uh, waltz, 
because that's the, the the song we picked out to have our first dance to. I didn't even realize that when I picked it out that it was a waltz, and then I was gonna have to figure out how to out a waltz. So, uh, man, that's just an unbelievable story, and and one that you and and your daughter and all the people there, and and hopefully all the people listening to this wherever I end up posting it, will will always remember that too. That's just an. Epic, it was. Epic story. I, I I wish, you know, my my hope. And I tell people this all the time when they come and say this, I always tell them, I've been playing two and a half years and they can't believe that. And I'm very grateful to God for this gift that I never knew I had. So I encourage people, don't think that you can't do something. Give it a shot. You don't know with all the noise in our life, you just don't know what you can do, whether it's music or some activity or sports or whatever it is. For me, it was music. It was something that I always felt like I needed to do and get out of my way. I own four pianos now. Like I said, my Steinway is unbelievable. Uh, I just bought a Roland RD88 gig piano. As soon as this craziness ends, I'm out. I get people asking me to play at their events now. Um, and I, I'm just so looking forward to doing it. And I, the other thing I would encourage people to do is push yourself. And when it's uncomfortable, that's where you got to go. That's a good thing, especially musically. Because if you get into a rut, and I find this when I'm writing, I do a song, then my next one kind of sounds like the one I just did. And uh, you got to recognize that and get away from that. Do a different rhythm, go to a different key, do some inversions, structure it a little bit differently. But by the way, all this stuff I'm talking about, didn't know anything about this, you know, when I first started. And uh, of course, YouTube is such an incredible tool, not only for Jacques' course, but uh, just for little things you want to learn about learn about sevens or be jazzy or a blues riff or, you know, it's unlimited and uh, we all have access to it. So it's just wonderful. So, th- so thanks for the kind words about the course. Once again, again, um, uh, but what I usually like to tell people is like, look, I'm not the hero in this story and I'm hearing your story now and you're the hero, right? I'm the guide in this story or I'm one of many guides that you've had that just knew a little bit more about, uh, something than you did and share that information with you. And what I always like to say is I think everybody has the ability to play piano on some level inside of them. And I just want to be the person to help them reach down and, and bring that out, something that's already inside of them. And I think in your case, it was very clear that that was, that was right there. And for you, it was like right there at the top. And then once we started opening it just a little bit, it just all exploded out and it continues to. You know, I think it's in, in, in our conversation, I haven't thought about this in, in, since it happened, but I remember what was that aha moment? I think is when I went to uh, the, uh, the chord chart and I, I use a different method now. I use Cortify, Cortify.net mm-hmm. right. is outstanding, outstanding. Uh, but I, I, I used your chart and as soon as I, you know, when you see the keys and once you figure out what the keys are and you can get your hands shaped properly, once you start following that along, along with the rhythm, that was kind of the aha moment for me. And it was kind of like, this isn't as hard as people think it is. I mean, people, and I'm glad you're, you're uh, shaking your head now. You're agreeing with me on that. Um, as a musician, you're sitting there and you're, when you, you don't have any musical background, you're looking at it and you're saying, how do they do that? And of course, what they don't know is as we're playing, most of the time we're making stuff up as we go. Because as long as you're in the chord, doesn't really matter which note you're playing you can kind of mix it up and all that but you know we all think oh how did you memorize what those notes are and stuff I don't memorize anything right? there's no memory I think in groups I think in groups of, of chords and of course if I can hear the song I can I can just kind of follow it along and, and I was going to mention this earlier the thing that really broke me away from the traditional type of learning the piano and God bless Nancy I love her I plug her I, she's on my she's on I think I reference her on on the SoundCloud account I'll go see her next month. I think the traditional way of teaching piano is to, is to memorize notes. Who can memorize notes? I don't think anybody can memorize notes unless you're doing a classical piece, which you have to do. But for regular type of music, everything else, for me, once I started thinking about thinking in groups of chords and with a bass, I mean, it was like, this is 10 times easier than people think it is. It's not that hard. Most songs only have three or four chords. That's it. Free falling has two, two. <laughs> That's it. And it's one of the best songs ever by Petty. So That's right. Um, you're, you're hitting the nail on the head here, Ken. I mean, you, it's, it's, 
it's most people like she music and traditional methods of just like memorization, quote unquote, it's what to play and when to play it. They tell you exactly what to play and when to play it. And I know you're maybe a little familiar with my story, but I took traditional piano lessons for 12 years growing up. And for 12 years, either a person or a piece of paper told me what to play and when to play it. I don't get it. I don't, right. And, and as you're saying that, Jock, it, 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 I'm reminded of that. And you said, I want to learn a song. And six months later, or whatever it was, I, can't, I don't even know what the song is. I can sit down now at this point, and if you give me a song I know and hear, in 10 minutes, I can bang out a rough version of it. Pick anything. I can, I'll figure it out. Yeah, I believe you. But uh, at the same time, I could say, hey, Ken, go play C major, uh, G major, A minor, F major. And you could, I bet you could play that for an hour and it sound interesting the entire time. The whole time, because I change it up. I didn't do some inversions. I'd go to different octaves. I would uh, change the rhythm a little bit. Uh, I'd do fifths instead of just one, three, five or what it is. I'd throw a seventh in there. Now, for people who are listening, they don't, may not know what I'm talking about. Right. Neither did I. Right. <laughs> but like I said, it all aggregates over time. And you don't even, it's like tying your shoe, driving your car. You don't really even think much about it anymore. A- after a while, it's like any other skill. It becomes part of your subconscious. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a tremendous thing. It is. I, I learned all this uh, when I was like 17, 18, 19 years old. I was kind of open. My eyes really opened because I had this other experience for 12 years. Then I was like, oh, wait, this whole other world exists? And so I started diving into that. I started playing at my church. I started enjoying playing for the first time in my life. It wasn't just a chore. And eventually, like in 2013, when I started Piano in 21 Days, that's when I was like, that's my aha moment was like, oh, like I need to share this with other people. Like when, when most people think of piano or learning piano, they think of the sheet music and the, and the scales and the, and the once a week in-person lessons and the old school stuff. And most people don't know about this other method about piano for some reason. Now it's, it's, it's guitarists know it. People learning guitar know this stuff, but why do you think there's this, just this such a big gap between the old way of learning and this, I I guess I would call it a newer way of learning piano. I I would have to speculate that. I mean, you know, once there's a, 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 a way that, it's all people know. I mean, you know, someone learns that way. That's how they learn. What a torturous way to learn how to play the piano. I mean, I just can't even imagine uh, doing that. I mean, uh, I, I, I was shown, I was asked, and this is on me. It's not on Nancy. Said, Nancy, how, show me how to play Weekend in New England, uh, Barry Manilow. I'm from New England. And so I was watching. I'd, have, I'd film her hands to see what she was doing until I understood. As soon as I understood what the chords were, that was easy. What's so hard? What's hard? This is easy. Once you understand the chords and the progression of it, it's so much easier. And why people spend all that time doing the old way of learning all that. Now you have to know theory. You got to understand the scales. Got to know what a key is. You got to know, you know, what chords are. You need to know what a major scale, is, a major, uh, a song in a major scale. You know, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, you know, diminished. And how it changes is once you get that little basic stuff, your, your, your world is now completely open to making incredible music. And the best thing about this, shock is the gift that it gives to other people. Uh, it's great to play, but to, to see how other people respond. And I know we're close out of time, but a year ago I was, I was in New York and there was a piano. I was at a conference. I was speaking at a conference in my business and there was a piano. Of course, I couldn't stand not sitting there. So I started playing, honest to goodness, a a song. It's on the website. Norman, my father who passed away last year. And while he was passing, I wrote a song for him. And I started playing this song. It's in a minor key. It's in a starts in a minor and I'm playing. And um, uh, I look up and this woman on the other side of the piano is sobbing sobbing listening to me play this song I wrote for my dad. It's called Norman and it's on SoundCloud. You can listen to it. And so I'm thinking, oh, and I'd never really done that. So I keep playing. I say, okay, hold it together. Next thing I know, she's sitting next to me on the, on the bench. And she's like, you know, like consoling me. Well, I wasn't the one that needed to be consoled. I was just playing the song. She was. But it had that much impact knowing that I had written that song for her dad. And she told me later that her father was dying. 
So it really, she really related to it. So I, I sent her the MP3 the next day. I saw her and I said, tell your dad that you had this written for him while he's dying. And of course, what a gift to be able to give that to somebody, uh, you know, to pass it on and spread it on. So it, it's just been incredible. And I'm so grateful. And I'm grateful to you. And I'm grateful to everyone who has been part of that. And um, I hope people check out, not so much because I want you to buy my music, I do, but, um, <laughs> but I want you to know where you can, what you can do and what your potential is. KenRichardPiano.com. Excellent. Ken, um, do you have a few m- more minutes or do you I have do. a hard stop? I, I'm just okay, wondering I, if I'm on your time rather than- No, well, I just, this story, you can edit story this, is unbelievable. You can edit this as quick <laughs> as you want, I guess, right? Excellent. Yeah, yeah. I've just, I've been collecting notes here and I'd love to ask you a few more follow-ups. Absolutely. Okay. I get as much time as you want to take. Great. And that's, I mean, that's another example of you sharing your music with somebody very close to you. Um, and I think that's an, a very important part of being able to make music on your own is being able to be able to share it with those that you love. And that's actually an underrated element of all this that for me over the past few years, because uh, a good friend of mine has been encouraging me to, to kind of make that one of the milestones of the course is like the moment that you can play music for somebody you've always wanted to play music for right? With uh, this person has an online course himself in another niche. And there's a lot of online courses out there where it's very defined. Like once you get to where you want to be, it's a very defined thing. Like if, if you're teaching somebody to start a business, once you make your first sale, okay, boom, great job. Like, um, but with learning piano, it's like, okay, what is that moment where it's like, okay, now I know how to play. And his suggestion was, well, make that moment when they, when they're comfortable and confident to play whatever song it is for somebody to that they love. And it sounds like you would somewhat agree with that. I would agree with that. It was kind of a, you know, the thing with my daughter, when that all came up, you know, there's planning a wedding is always a, a, a you know, there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot that goes into that. Yes. And uh, she suggested it because it was funny. And I tell Nancy the story at the time, Nancy kept saying, Ken, I want you to compose. You, I want you to compose. Start thinking about composing. I'm thinking, Nancy, I don't even know how to play the piano. But she heard something in me that suggested that. And then uh, I told her, I said, I really don't want to do that because I want to play covers. And the next day I had lunch at, with my daughter planning the wedding. And I was telling her the story because she knows Nancy. And uh, she said, my daughter said to me, Dad, just write something for me. And it was like the scales fell right? Because now I had a purpose of doing it. And I thought, that's a great idea. And I went home and I just, it's in C because her name's Christine. So I had to write it in C. So I made it very spe- special for her. And, and like I said, months later, I figure out it's a three quarter thing, but the impact that it, you can't even believe what my wife, how my wife reacted to that, right? Here, her, her husband's writing a song for her, his, our daughter to dance with at her wedding. And, uh, and then have it orchestrated. It, 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 uh, I hope people go listen to it. You'll hear my version and, and, and the orchestrated version. But the impact that it has on other people is such a gift. It's not a gift. It's not my gift to them. It's, my gift, it's not a gift that I'm giving them. It's a gift to me that I'm able to give that to them. And um, it, it's just, it's just a, a wonderful thing. And you know, I often think, man, I should have, if I started this 20 years ago, where, where, where would it be, you know? And uh, I, I don't know the answer. Maybe I wouldn't have been interested, but, you know, things happen at the perfect time in life. We don't realize that sometimes. And uh, so what's my end game? You know, I'd love people enjoying my music. I don't need the money. I have a good job. I, I have a good career. It's a, it's a, it's a crazy advocation, advocation for me. But I guess if, if you say, well, what would be your ultimate Everest, if you would. I said, well, because people say this to me all the time. That should be in a movie. That's part of a movie score. That Everyone says that. Two things. Your music is so relaxing, and that should be in a movie. So can you imagine, Jacques, to be able to walk into a movie someday and watch this movie and hear one of your pieces in the background as part of the score of a movie? That, to me, would be... It's so surreal to you. I can't even wrap my head around thinking about that, but why not? Why well, not? Ken, that, I mean, that does sound amazing. And to be honest with you, you know, that's, that's not a goal that I would have. I would far, I would much rather 
see your music in a movie. And then I could say one of my students' music was in a movie because <laughs> I'm more passionate about teaching piano than yes. I am about playing piano. Everybody's goals are different. Um, but that, that is truly amazing. So let's jump back uh, in the story again. Okay. Three, you said three summers ago was when you, when you went to that concert, Doobie Brothers, you heard it again, 42 years, the whole deal. So that was summer of 2017. Correct. Um, you start seeing Nancy a little bit. You sign up for my course on November 29th of 2017. You know that. See, I don't I know, know that. that. Oh, yeah. You I'm, me I'm, a big, okay. I'm a big data guy. But here's Good. what's funny about that is that I didn't really hear from you again about, until about two weeks ago. <laughs> I, so, I wrote a couple times. I think uh, on a. I think I had a suggestion on a different site. Um, I can't remember what they were to find the chords. It wasn't Chordify. It was something mm -hmm. else. And you wrote back, and you you're very responsive. Jacques is very yeah. responsive if you write to him. And uh, you know, then we lost touch for a long time. And yeah. once I kind of broke through here in the last ninety days, sixty days, I thought I got to share it with people, especially those who have contributed to it you know, where I am. So that's what prompted me to reach out to you again. Yeah, I love it. So my next question would be, surely I'm not the only person you've learned from since late 2017. Like what, who, what other instructors, what other courses have you taken? Uh, what other learning did you do on the piano journey? Uh, well, Nancy initially and, and you, I have not signed up for any other course. Uh, I'm a big YouTube fan and finding little lessons. There are certain people I, I, listen to I find and I it resonates with me Rick Beato uh, is phenomenal um, uh, everything music Rick Beato you can google him uh, I've never talked to Rick uh, but he's all about music theory and uh, so I've learned a lot from him about scales he, he does everything he's a former producer he's a platinum producer I, I think a lot of your audience probably knows who he is already um, uh, I have friends who are musicians, um, talk to them. How do you do this? How do you, you know, I'm like a little kid. I'm like a four-year-old asking all those annoying questions because those are the ones that come to mind. So anyone who, who I have a chance to ask about, I ask. Uh, Patrick Woodland, who I mentioned, uh, is actually becoming a business partner of mine. We have a music venture we're putting together about producing people's music like me. So someone like me writes a, a, a piece of uh, music and then our, it's going to be makemyrecord.com. A lot of these services out there, but Patrick has access to anyone, anyone you want. You want Joe Walsh playing on your record? You can get Joe Walsh. You're going to pay for it, mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's kind of a concept. So I, I'm surrounding, to answer your question, Jacques, I'm surrounding myself with, with incredible music people. And I'm so happy to be able to do that. And, Honestly, Patrick will say, has said to me many times, you have something that most people don't have, just the way you play and whatnot. So it's very encouraging me, but I'm trying to surround myself with music people because by osmosis, you just get a lot of knowledge and information and you're listening. You listen to music differently than you did before. As you said early, listen for the chord changes. You said that in your course. I just remembered that. So I listen for that. What are they doing there? Where are they going? Can I tell you what chord it is or what note it is? No, um, <laughs> not yet. But, uh, and I know a lot of people can. Um, what else? Playing a lot. I probably play an hour and a half a day, not because I have to, but because I can't stay away from it. Drives my family crazy. That's why I go down to the club and I play down there on that beautiful piano. And... Um, now, earlier you were talking about how when you're learning anything new, it's kind of that flat line for a long time, long time. And, then, and then you slowly get momentum of it, and then it's like almost exponential eventually. It is. Indeed. But, but a lot of people, like the reason most people don't actually know how to play piano today, I would say, or even the ones that have tried to learn and don't know how to play, it's because that line is flat for so long before they see any real tangible results. Why do you think you were able to get through that part and other people stop or give up? I can only speak for myself. Um, I didn't want to fail. You know, I'm kind of competitive and I, I, and I felt like I was making progress. And I think you've said that in your, in your course, the more progress you feel you're making, the more encouraged you are to keep going. So that's what it was. And then you'll hit a, you'll hit a point where that curve just starts to really ramp the slope on that really starts to, you remember your algebra days, uh, will start to ramp and that just is that's fuel on the on the fire and the passion 
of, of piano. So I would encourage people, hang in there. And I think the more theory you learn, theory not in the sense of, of, of looking at piano and, and, and saying, you know, looking at a, a, a sheet of music and saying, you know, what note is this? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about understanding the 12 notes and how is, you know, the intervals between them and why is it that you can go up a half step and be in a different key and play the same thing in a different half, you know, those types of things. It's not really that much, but I think for me, once I understood that, the whole world just opened up. And then the piano playing part is like any other physical skill. You got to practice. You got to, your fingers got to, got your muscle memory has to kind of be there. Your hands have to learn the shapes of chords. So I can go to the shapes of the chords very quickly now. We're at the beginning. Okay, where is that? Okay, let's see. That's a, that's an A major. So let's see. That's an A, a C sharp, and mm, oh, an E. Okay. All right. So, you know, that becomes that becomes secondary after a while. You're not even thinking about that. You're just knowing where you're going. Your, your hands just kind of go there automatically. It's like any other skill. So, I mean, on, on a similar note, I want to ask you basically, do you think that it's possible to learn piano in 21 days? And, and let me set up that question a little better. When people first hear about it, piano in 21 days, a lot of people's initial reaction is, wow, that's not possible. That's a total scam. You're lying to people. And for example, you should see some of my Facebook ads. I don't do a lot of Facebook ads, but I do a little bit. And every, every once in a while, the Facebook ad will get in front of either a traditional piano teacher or somebody that's played the traditional way for 40 years. And they just, you should see their comments. It's like, I can't believe you're scamming people like this. You know, nobody can learn in 21 days. It takes years and years and years to learn. What are your thoughts? Piano in 21 day, I would disagree with those. I will, I will disagree with those comments from your critics. Number one, you're cutting into their business, which, you know, you have yeah, to kind of take right. into consideration. So there's some jealousy there. But here's the, here's the takeaway in 21 days. Piano in 21 days gives you the foundation, the foundational elements of, of how a piano works and how music works. And once you have those ingredients, you can bake the most beautiful cakes uh, in the world. So yes, you can learn piano in 21 days. You can at a minimum follow any song that you know or can hear and play the accompaniment of any song you can hear. And you can do that in my opinion in much less than 21 days. The 21 days is important because what Jacques does, and again, this is completely, we haven't talked, we've never talked before this, this, this video. Just what it minutes. does, it gives you the, 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 um, the elements, the foundational elements to put those things together. So yes, at the end of 21 days, you can pick any song that you know, or even make up your own and play those progressions and, and uh, maybe stretching a little bit, but you know enough to be stuck in some band somewhere playing and follow along and accompany that music. That's absolutely true. Very cool. Well said, Ken. Well, thank you so much, man. It's been a true pleasure to, to hear this story because uh, you signed up in 2017, late 2017. Uh, here, we, we, we talk very little from then until now. And you send me an email. Hey, Jacques, I don't know if you remember me, but a couple of years ago, I signed up for your course. And next week, I'm releasing a piano album. I'm like, what? And I click and I click on it and I'm like, surely it's not any good. And it was really, really great. And so I was like, man, I got to figure out what this guy's story was. So man, true pleasure. Thank you so much. And I hope we'll, uh, I hope we can stay in touch. I hope so. And uh, let's revisit in a year. Who knows what I'll, where I'll be going. You know, I think I'm still kind of on that curve. So yeah. uh, let's see where we are a year from now. Outstanding. Thanks, Ken. So I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Thanks a lot for viewing this video and thank you again to Ken for joining me in that conversation. He has just been able to do so much in such a short amount of time. If this has inspired you in any way and maybe you're on the fence, maybe you're like, ah, I, don't, I don't know if I could do it. Well, try it out for free. I've got a free workbook waiting for you over at pianoin21days.com. Click the link here, get started for free and see if it could work for you. And you could be playing piano in as little as a few days from now. Hope to see you on the inside and be your piano teacher.